Well, good afternoon. We're here at the State Emergency Operations Center uh, in our response to approaching Hurricane Milton. We have Kevin Guthrie, Florida DEM, Jared Perdue, Florida DOT, Dave Kerner, Florida Highway Patrol, Major General Haas, Florida National Guard, and Director Robert Roger Young from Florida Fish and Wildlife. Hurricane Milton is expected to make landfall on the west coast of Florida as soon as Wednesday evening. The storm has moved a little slower than projected, uh, but remember, don't get wedded to the cone. Uh, there will be impacts far outside the cone, and these cones can shift. And so there's not a, an approximation uh, that you can hang your hat on about where this storm is actually going to make landfall. All folks on the west coast of the Florida Peninsula uh, should be prepared for potential major impacts. Uh, we have made a pre-landfall declaration request from FEMA for support, uh, and the federal government has approved a portion of our request for pre-landfall items, and we expect the remaining parts of our request subsequent to landfall for debris and individual assistance once the storm hits will also be approved. We currently have 51 counties under a state of emergency. Uh, as of 3 o'clock, Milton has strengthened not just into a major hurricane, uh, but a Category 5 hurricane, and not just a Category 5 hurricane, but a very strong 175 mile per hour sustained wind uh, Category 5 hurricane. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty about what is going to happen in terms of this track. It is predicted that this will weaken, but you know, it was not predicted that it would get this strong to begin with. Uh, so, so we can hope and, and pray that, that it does weaken. Uh, but as of right now, this is a ferocious hurricane. Uh, it is currently uh, a little less than 700 miles southwest of Tampa. Storm surge watch has been issued for the Florida Gulf Coast from mainland Monroe County to the Dixie Levy County line. Uh, possibility of 8 to 12 feet of storm surge is forecast uh, from the Anclote River to Englewood, including Tampa Bay. 5 to 10 foot peak storm surge is forecast from Yankee Town southward to the Anclote River and from Englewood southward to Bonita Beach, including Charlotte Harbor. And those numbers can change and they can go up in certain areas depending on how the storm ultimately approaches the Florida Peninsula. Hurricane watches have been issued for portions of West Central Florida and the Nature Coast. Tropical storm watches extend further south and north through uh, Southwest Florida and the Keys and along uh, Northern Florida. The Florida Division of Emergency Management actually is actively addressing storm-related resource requests. Uh, they're currently uh, in the process of fulfilling 850 missions. Uh, they've deployed everything from sandbags to shelf-stable meals to tens of thousands of water bottles to thousands of tarps. Um, we've already sent truckloads of food and water to Central Florida in preparation for points of distribution site subsequent uh, to the storm hitting. Uh, we're also coordinating the deployment of more than 2,000 feet of flood protection systems and prioritizing critical infrastructure like hospitals, wastewater treatment facilities, and electrical infrastructure. Uh, we have generators deployed to support special needs sheltering. We also have Starlinks deployed uh, in, in areas that have asked for that. More than 200 ambulances and more than 30 paratransits are in Central Florida ready to support first responder operations uh, as appropriate. State of Florida is amassing fuel reserves ahead of Milton and staging it to be utilized as needed. Those quantities include 415,000 gallons of diesel, 389,000 gallons of gasoline, and there is, as I mentioned this morning, an additional 1.5 million gallons of both diesel and gasoline uh, that are en route to the state. Now, there is currently no fuel shortage in the state of Florida. Fuel continues to arrive at Florida ports. However, there are long lines at some gas stations, uh, and because you've had a run on gas, there have been gas stations that have run out of fuel, but they are being resupplied with the fuel. So we're going to continue to ensure that, that we have fuel coming, but the, they're still coming with the ports. Uh, we have some coming uh, on the ground uh, so people can go. You may be in a line, uh, but if your gas station runs out, there's going to be more fuel on the way. 
Uh, as I've mentioned, we have ramped up support for county debris removal operations. We're working this mission to supplement uh, their mission 24 seven around the clock. And we're gonna continue to do that uh, all the way until it is no longer safe to do so. Uh, please, local officials, these vendors, uh, there's been vendors that they don't necessarily do. And then when there's some sunlight and people see they're not doing, then they start to work really hard. Uh, we got to get this as much of this taken care of as possible. Uh, I know with um, uh, Kevin and with Jared putting the state assets to supplement, it has made a really significant difference. Uh, we want to continue to do that. Those barrier islands like Pinellas, Manatee that are under evacuation orders, uh, people obviously should heed those. Uh, but once that deadline passes, uh, we're still going to have the debris removal operations ongoing. Uh, all the way until we start to hit tropical storm force winds. So that's all the rest of today through the night, all day tomorrow, uh, most likely into uh, the beginning of Wednesday morning. Uh, so I appreciate all the, the effort that's gone into that on the state. Uh, we have deployed just on the state side to assist with the federal, uh, or excuse me, with the local debris mission, over 300 dump trucks uh, to help with debris. And in the 30, last 36 hours, uh, state assets have been able to do 12,000 cubic yards of debris removed from communities and brought to landfill. That's 663 total loads. Uh, so that's been a good mobilization. It will make a difference, but we need to keep doing that uh, to mitigate the harm that could happen once the storm goes. Uh, Florida National Guard, State Guard, additional FDOT personnel, and Florida Highway Patrol are all engaged in that debris mission. For the storm, we have 5,000 National Guardsmen that have been mobilized, uh, and we were, will have, before the storm hits, another 3,000 National Guardsmen that will be on duty. Uh, we're also deploying uh, major heavy equipment to assist with debris removal, and of course, uh, National Guard will be uh, a big part of any search and rescue that needs to happen, as well as helping set up our points of distribution. These uh, debris and landfill sites uh, are open, not just from state assets or from the local debris contractors, but for private individuals and, and citizens. And so if you've got a pickup truck, you get load debris up, we want you to go and do that. Uh, I know we've had issues with those sites being left, uh, being closed when they should be open 24. We've opened them when we've seen that, uh, but let's keep this going uh, until it's no longer safe to do so. We're also coordinating the evacuation of pets from Pinellas, Manatee, and DeSoto counties uh, to Walton County's temporary emergency animal shelter. Obviously, we, we expect Floridians to take care of their own pets, but you've got some of these pets that are in shelters, uh, and we don't wanna see them abandoned in areas that are very, very dangerous. Uh, we're also delivering a 2,500 gallon water tanker to Suwannee County Animal Control and coordinating vet veterinary assistance post landfall for Hillsborough County. So the linemen that are being pre-staged as, as is our practice in Florida, uh, we will have uh, over 30,000 linemen. Uh, many are still en route. Some of them are coming from as far away as California. You still have ongoing major power restoration missions in states like Georgia and North Carolina. That has taken a lot of resources, uh, but all of our companies uh, are committed uh, to utilizing mutual aid. And so you're gonna end up having uh, over 30,000, which is a massive number of folks to be staged. And of course, we're anticipating significant power outages. And so it's important that, that we do that. Uh, we have hundreds of state search and rescue personnel embedded in potential impact sites along the West Coast to begin immediate rescue operations as soon as the storm passes. We've established a temporary base camp at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg to support ongoing operations, not just with the current debris mission, but also post landfall first responder missions. So you should have a plan and you should be executing your plan uh, particularly if you're on the west coast of the Florida Peninsula. Uh, these evacuation orders uh, have gone out in many of those places. I know more uh, will be coming uh, in areas that have not yet done that. Uh, now's the time to, to do it. Storm's not gonna hit today. Storm's not gonna hit tomorrow. 
Uh, we may start to see some, some bad weather sometime on Wednesday uh, morning, and then obviously we're anticipating sometime uh, Wednesday evening for the storm to make landfall. So, so please, you, you do have time to, to get out, so please do it. Uh, please uh, execute that plan now at this point if you are in one of those danger zones. Uh, gas, I know a lot of people have been filling up their tanks. You have seen some lines in places. I mentioned the fuel. Uh, massive amounts of fuel are being brought in, uh, but make sure you, you don't want to get caught on an interstate if you don't have gas in your tank. Uh, that's, that's not going to be good, especially when so many people are using that. Uh, some people may not know their evacuation zone. If you want to know your evacuation zone, go to floridadisaster.org backslash no to determine if you were in an evacuation zone. Obviously, a lot of people in the Sun Coast part of Florida uh, just went through Hurricane Helene. We saw a lot of storm surge. So I think most people have a good sense of that, uh, but maybe not everybody knows that. So floridadisaster.org backslash no. Uh, again, keep your eyes out, keep your ears out for any of these evacuations. I know a lot of the counties have already issued that. I think you're going to continue to see some more evacuations. Uh, already we have Charlotte, Citrus, Hernando, Hillsborough, Lee, Manatee, Pasco, and Pinellas uh, that have issued uh, mandatory evacuations for, for some of their, their zones. As I mentioned this morning, tolls in West and Central Florida and Alligator Alley are suspended. And they will continue to be suspended until it's no longer necessary. Uh, Florida Department of Transportation is opening roadway shoulders as necessary to facilitate evacuation and ease congestion on I-4 and I-75. So the, the shoulder is completely open all the way until, uh, I guess it's in SR-417 uh, uh, in Central Florida from Tampa on I-4. That shoulder is open. The shoulder started to be open from the north on 75, I-10 working south. It should be completely open within the next hour. Uh, and so those are two roads that can typically have traffic anyways. Right now, the usage on I-75 is about 90% more than what would typically be happening right now. Uh, so FDOT will have that shoulder open. That does help to ease congestion uh, and keep it moving as best you can, but just be prepared that there are a lot of people on the roads right now. Uh, you got time. Uh, it's, it's not as if it, if you have a delay, it's not as if the storm's gonna come tonight, but uh, FDOT is doing uh, what they can to ameliorate that and to be able to keep things moving as best as possible. Visit Florida has emergency accommodation modules on Expedia, Priceline, and Booking.com for those evacuating. These modules will continue to provide real-time hotel availability and lodging resources. We're working with the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association uh, to continue to, as is standard in these emergencies, encourage hotels to reduce prices. Uh, Floridians who are evacuating because of the storm, they typically will offer a distress rate. I know a lot of the properties have already published that. Rosen Properties, Red Roof Inns, Alofts, La Quinta's, Motel 6, Best Western, Holiday Inn, and you'll get a better rate as well as uh, waiving, in most of those cases, any pet fees. So please bring your pets and make sure that you're taking care of your pets when you're going to those establishments. Uber, just like we did in Hurricane Helene, uh, they are finalizing a code for free rides for those who are evacuating to shelters. Uh, we will give you that once it becomes live. I know that uh, shelters will open once the evacuation orders take effect then the shelters open. And so you're gonna see that happening a lot over the next 24 hours. The following counties will close schools beginning tomorrow, Tuesday, October 8th. Charlotte, Citrus, Collier, DeSoto, Glades, Hardy, Hendry, Hernando, Hillsboro, Indian River, Lee, Manatee, Okeechobee, Pasco, Pinellas, Polk, Sarasota, and Volusia. You can find your county's emergency management page for specific information related to your county at floridadisaster.org backslash counties. Uh, you will likely have county-specific alerts that will be issued by your county officials. This is right now uh, a storm that is stronger than what any of the models uh, uh, envisioned just 48 hours ago. And in fact, even the models that said it would eventually reach Cat 5 status had it at a relatively weak Cat 5. Uh, this is a strong Cat 5. It has intensified 
very, very rapidly. And while every projection is that it's going to weaken before it hits the coast of Florida, uh, we can't necessarily bank on that. Uh, this will produce major damage, whatever ends up happening. Uh, but certainly at the strength it is now, uh, this is a really, really uh, strong storm. And the effects of that, not just for the storm surge, uh, but for wind damage and debris, uh, would be really, really significant. So you, you have time today to execute that plan. Uh, you have time to be able to make sure that you and your family and your pets are safe. Uh, so please do that. Uh, this is not a storm you want to take a risk on. Uh, as I've said many times over the last day or two, we can't guarantee where this thing is going to end up making landfall. And it is possible even a very strong storm makes landfall in one part of the peninsula. If you're in a different part, um, 100 miles north of where it goes in, you know, maybe it's not uh, catastrophic in that area. But there's no way of knowing that. And I would say anything south of where the storm hits is going to have major storm surge, uh, even 100 miles away. So that's, that's going to happen. So we just went through Helene. A lot of people on the Sun Coast uh, saw some significant storm surge. This has the potential to be to be much more significant than that and life threatening. I mean, we had loss of life because of the storm surge that affected the Tampa Bay area with Hurricane Helene. Uh, I would imagine that that this one would be uh, more life threatening in many different respects as a result of the strength of the storm and where it may end up hitting. Uh, ultimately. So, so please take the appropriate precautions. Uh, you got folks on the local level. I've been talking with a lot of the, the counties. Uh, people have been ramping up for this. Um, everyone was on edge after Helene. Once this thing formed uh, in a system, uh, people have been working really hard. And I know they're working hard to get people evacuated. And I know everyone at the local level is going to be working hard uh, to help any rescues that need to be done, help get people back on their feet. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of resources that are being amassed across all levels of government to be able to respond to this storm. We can't affect the track. We can't control how strong or how weak it gets. The only thing that, that you can affect is what you do and the decisions you make to protect yourself and your families. And so, so please execute your plan now. Uh, we'll hope and pray for the best, uh, but we have to be prepared and we have to expect a major, major impact uh, in the middle of this week. Okay, Kevin. Thank you, Governor. Always appreciate the governor's trust in the state emergency response team to get the job done and ensuring that we have all the resources we need as the state braces for yet another hurricane. As the governor has mentioned, we are fulfilling more than 800 mission requests, 850 mission requests. This afternoon, residents should be finalizing their disaster plans. And if the, the plan, if your county calls you to evacuate, you need to do so. Um, I'm actually encouraged by the amount of evacuation that is going on right now because what's happening right now, these are individuals that are either going to friends, family, or they have the necessary means to do something and they're doing it well in advance of landfall in a very orderly fashion. They know that the traffic's gonna be there. So again, this is actually a good sign uh, that people are starting to get out of harm's way. People now will then start going to the shelters that are open up at the local level. Please don't forget your pets, as the governor has said, uh, make sure that you have uh, materials for, or I'm sorry, make sure you have uh, supplies for your children, senior citizens, and people with access and functional needs in your home. If you have a person with access and functional needs in your home, you should have registered with the Florida Special Needs Registry at floridadisaster.org slash SNR to provide that information to local first responders ahead of potential storm impacts. Those who live in the evacuation zone and depend on medication or electricity to use medical, advices, uh, medical devices, please listen and evacuate now. If you lose power, there will be no way for you to use your medical devices. Storm surge values have gone up from this morning from 10 feet to now 8 to 12 feet. We had the visual this morning for those that weren't with us. We put that on the side wall over here of 5 feet, 10 feet, and then of course the roof is at 10 feet, 8 inches. So again, 2 feet above that is what we may experience. Several counties have already called for the mandatory evacuations and I urge you to heed those warnings. I know I keep saying it, but this is very important. If you live in a condo or a high rise, 
you and must evacuate. Please evacuate out and not up. If you evacuate up, you need to make sure that you have the ability to get up and down the stairs. The elevators will not be working. Visit floridadisaster.org slash no and uh, type in your address to determine if you live in an evacuation zone. 24 hours from now will be too late. As long as your gas tank or electric vehicle is halfway full or, and, or halfway charged, you should be able to evacuate tens of miles further inland to a safe location and away from the storm surge. The state has fuel and electric vehicle chargers pre-staged along the evacuation routes to support the evacuations if needed. If you are in an evacuation zone and need evacuation assistance, again, if you're in an evacuation zone and you need evacuation assistance, please call 800-729-3413. That's 800-729-3413. We do have buses running that will come in and supplement county uh, and city pickups. The state has activated the state assistance information line. Residents needing information and resources. Again, this is an information line. It is not I need help line. So if you need information, you can call 1-800-342-3557. That's 1-800-342-3557. And again, we can service uh, individuals in English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole. Additional preparedness resources and state updates are on Hurricane on Hurricane Milton can be found by visiting floridadisaster.org slash updates. Please make sure for all of the latest information, you are following us on X and Instagram at F-L-S-E-R-T, that's at Florida CERT, and Facebook at F-D-E-M. We are sharing all of those updates in real time, and we have a staff that's doing nothing but working social media. Residents should also have multiple ways to receive weather alerts and always follow the warnings of your local official, officials. Connect with your local county emergency management by visiting floridadisaster.org slash county. And thank you again, Governor, for your commitment to the residents of the state of Florida and the state emergency response team. Okay. Jaron, do you have an update? Thank you, Governor, and good afternoon. Uh, we continue our debris removal efforts as directed by the Governor. This has been a remarkable partnership between all of the responding state agencies, uh, the Florida National Guard, the State Guard, FDOT, FDEM, the Florida Department of Agriculture. We're really proud of the progress we've made thus far. You heard the governor. We've already removed over 12,000 cubic yards of debris in just 36 hours. That's 663 loads. We have over 300 dump trucks in circulation. Right now we have made this a primary mission in getting ready for the impact of Hurricane Milton, and we're going to continue those efforts until, until it's no longer safe to do so. Um, we have state employees out there working right now that live within the cone of where this storm is going to hit. They're removing debris for our lo local communities. We encourage all of our local governments, all of our local municipalities, please marshal every resource available to join with us in removing this debris before Hurricane Milton hits. Debris contractors, debris vendors, we've heard things about showing up here, not showing up there. We're encouraging you, we're asking you, please bring your resources that are available to the area to remove debris before Hurricane Milton makes impact. Uh, we have begun suspending construction on all of our construction projects within the 51 counties that are potentially impacted. Uh, we've removed all planned lane co closures as part of those construction projects. We have been coordinating with our construction contractor industry here in the state of Florida they stand prepared and ready to bring resources to the table to respond to the aftermath of Hurricane Milton. As of 10.30 this morning, we have suspended tolls in Central Florida, West Florida, and Alligator Alley to help facilitate those that are evacuating. We've also, since noon today, we've seen people are starting to leave and evacuate. That is a very good thing. Traffic is continuing to increase. Congestion is increasing. We began implementing what's known as emergency shoulder use at noon today. The shoulder is already open on I-4, as you heard from the governor, um, from Tampa Bay all the way up to State Road 417 in Central Florida. Um, we're currently opening the shoulder for use on I-75. We started at I-10 in Columbia County. We're working our way south. It will be open within the hour from Tampa Bay, just north of where I-75 and I-4 meet, all the way to I-10 in Columbia County. We have increased the frequency of our Road Ranger Service Patrol. We also activated pre-event contracts for motorist aid 
Also, if vehicles stall out, run out of gas, whatever, we need to get those out of the travel way as quickly as possible. Minor incidents, clear the travel way so people can continue to evacuate. Our Road Ranger Service Patrol do provide air, tire changing services, small amounts of fuel. And so our goal is to bring every resource we have to keep traffic moving and help people evacuate efficiently. There have been discussions, rumors about something called contraflow. We do not reverse the flow of traffic on our interstates in the state of Florida. This is very important to understand. We need that interstate system for emergency responders, for staging of assets and resources, for residents to continue to move around. You've heard um, how evacuations happen here. It's get out of the storm surge area, get to a place of safety. We need access to remain for all of our facilities. We use what's known as emergency shoulder use. We use it during Hurricane Irma. We used it during Hurricane Ian. It worked very well. There will be several hours of congestion. Um, traffic is going to be bad while people evacuate, but this method works, and we're going to continue facilitating those evacuations as people get to safety. Uh, there's been a lot of rain. The ground is saturate, saturated right now with the forecast. This storm is, is forecast to be a hurricane all the way across the peninsula. We expect it to be a very large vegetative debris event. We're staging our resources and our assets for cut and toss and roadway clearing. This is going to be one of our primary missions after the impact of the storm so that the search and rescue life safety mission can go unimpeded. Um, also, with um, our coastal facilities, with bridges, low-lying roads and coastal areas, also bridges and low-lying roads on rivers, streams, creeks, inland. We're going to be paying very close attention to those. We have our bridge inspectors already staged. Um, we're going to have our damage assessment teams out there as soon as the storm passes through. We will assess damage as quickly as possible and begin to affect emergency temporary repairs immediately after the storm passes through so that people can move around. We've staged over a thousand generators, nearly 70 pumps to respond to this storm, and we are ready to go. We've been in very close coordination with our seaports and airports. Um, specifically with Port Tampa Bay, which is a very important port with regards to fuel. They've continued to re receive shipments of fuel. The fuel ter terminals have continued operating and getting that port back open as quickly as possible after the storm passes through is definitely going to be a priority. Our 2000 FDOT team members are committed. They've been activated since Hurricane Helene. They're going to remain activated through Milton and they are going to be here 24 seven to support our communities and respond to this event. Really appreciate the partnership with the Division of Emergency Management, all of our state partners, and also Florida Highway Patrol, who has been an integral part of getting the shoulders open for um, hurricane evacuations. For real-time traffic info, FL1, FL511.com is the place to go. That is the most accurate, up-to-date information for traffic, FL511.com. Again, thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Thank you, Governor. Dave Kerner, honored to be here on behalf of the Florida Highway Patrol, and it's an honor to serve Governor DeSantis, but more importantly, I would say it's, uh, we appreciate, Governor, the ability that and uh, the way that you empower us as agency heads to work together with our fellow agencies here in the state of Florida. I can assure you here in the Emergency Operations Center, uh, all the uh, operational agency heads and, and departments are here working together. Uh, we work day in and day out together during regular times, and we work even more closely here in the EOC to make sure that we keep everyone in Florida safe. I'm going to give a brief overview of how the Florida Highway Patrol is fully activated and fully engaged. All nearly 2,000 state troopers are playing some important role in the evacuation process and also the, also the de debris removal. I can tell you that we've worked very diligently with the Department of Transportation on debris removal, uh, particularly in Pinellas County. The governor mentioned earlier a scenario where um, one of the dump sites wasn't open during uh, the evening or early morning hours and uh, unfortunately we had to break into that uh, facility and, and, and open it up and I would say to local governments that we have to have your cooperation, your continued cooperation in running a 24-7 uh, debris removal and, and emergency operation here in the state of Florida in those affected areas. The, the ability for not just DOT contractors um, and DOT trucks to remove uh, bulk debris but also for our fellow citizens and residents for them to be able to remove 
uh, debris that is in front of their homes or, or businesses is a very important part of this uh, operation and it's an important public service and I can promise you that if you're in a potentially affected area there is going to be state troopers at those sites making sure that you can get into these facilities as quickly as possible get out and, and uh, return on your way whether you're evacuating or you're staying in your home uh, we have 74 quick response troopers that have pre-staged in Orlando they are going to be embedded into the affected areas as the storm hits or just prior to to assist the state uh, na the National Guard and the State Guard and rescue operations we are working diligently with the Department of Transportation to make sure that the emergency shoulder use operation goes uh, without any issue and I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically about that we have our FHP air support staged and prepared to deploy when needed our FHP drone units are currently deployed over uh, waste disposal sites, uh, making sure that the traffic continues to flow, and our ground crews with the de uh, debris cleanup in Pinellas County as well, and FHP troopers are monitoring evacuation traffic across the state. I want to just hit three brief points uh, bef um, before my time here is over. We are on scene at debris removal sites in for the projected areas that are going to be impacted. I've talked about this just a couple moments ago, but it's important to highlight that we are also engaged not just in moving those DOT trucks around, but you're also going to see state troopers moving and escorting fuel trucks around as well. Um, we will be again there to assist with traffic control to make sure that you get in. So please do not hesitate getting rid of dangerous debris that is in front of your home uh, for fear that you're not going to be able to access one of these sites. Work with your local governments, find out where those sites are. They're county and city specific, but we will ensure that you have the opportunity to unload any debris that needs to be moved. Emergency shoulder use. Uh, this is not a new concept in the state of Florida, but it may be a new concept for residents that have uh, recently moved here. We don't want any person to have any concern or any hesitation that they should hesitate because you may be driving on a shoulder. Uh, you may say to yourself, well, shoulders aren't designed to drive at high highway speeds. If we're executing the ESU program, that means that there's enough congestion that we're not going to be at highway speeds. And I want to talk about making sure that we keep those shoulders open. If your car breaks down, the role of the Florida Highway Patrol is to make sure that we get there as quickly as possible with our DOT Road Ranger partners. We will work quickly and diligently to get your car up and running, whether it's a flat tire, if you ran out of fuel, or something to that effect. However, if it's a scenario where your vehicle is going to occupy that lane for more than 10 minutes, we're going to have to move that car onto the grass. We have to keep the roadways open, um, but we will work with you and we will guarantee that we will get you off the interstate system safely. You're going to see a high level of presence of law enforcement and state troopers uh, as you uh, go upon the roadways of the state, particularly where the ESU is in effect. The state troopers and other law enforcement are there to help, they're there to assist. Feel free to engage them if you have questions or concerns. Um, if there's a problem with your vehicle, call STAR FHP. If there's any other uh, concern that you see public safety wise, call STAR FHP. A trooper will be with, to you within minutes. And then the last thing that I would say about evacu evacuations, um, if you're in a potentially affected area, follow the directions of your local leaders about evacuation. But please do not hesitate to evacuate because you have some sort of concern about property damage or property theft. I can promise you on behalf of the Florida Highway Patrol and really all state law enforcement and our local law enforcement partners, during the run-up of this evacuation prior to the storm hitting, we will be in force in those communities making sure that your property is safe. The governor has emphasized and reiterated that this is a law and order state. We will not tolerate people that are looting, that are trying to take advantage of people that are going through an emergency. So do not hesitate to evacuate out of fear that your property will be damaged or stolen. Uh, with that said, it's an honor to serve the, the people of Florida in this uh, time of emergency and need, and we will do our very best to keep everybody safe. Thank you. Okay, so we are, you know, here we are Monday afternoon. I know a lot of people have already heeded the call in, in those uh, vulnerable areas and have begun evacuating or evacuated already. I know more in the process of doing that. You know, you have time to execute this plan now. Uh, you're gonna have shelters available in, in your counties. 
you do not need, you know, we talked about using the shoulders on 75 and I-4, and, and obviously FDOT's going to be happy to do whatever we can to facilitate that, uh, but you don't need to uh, e evacuate hundreds of miles. Uh, there'll be shelters in your county. Every county has a pet-friendly shelter, special needs shelter. We also have hotels, friends' houses, family members who may be in areas that are not susceptible to storm surge, those are all viable options. And so don't think, because there's some people that, especially some of the elderly, they're like, do I really want to get on the road and, and be on the interstate for 150 miles in bumper to bumper traffic? And the answer is you don't need to do that. Uh, if you're in an evacuation zone, there are other places you can go to evacuate that is not going to require that. And as I mentioned earlier, and once we get the code, we will publicize for everybody for the Uber, uh, when counties under state of emergency, when they do evacuation orders and they open shelters, uh, you're going to be able to get Uber rides to, to go to the shelters as well. So not everyone has an ability necessarily to, to be driving a car right now. We understand that. So we're working, on, and I know Kevin has worked with uh, localities when they've requested for additional transportation support. But you have time to execute your plan now, but you got to do it now. Uh, we are going to have, um, you know, probably tomorrow, there will be a lot more work that's going to be done in preparation. We anticipate the storm coming sometime in the lighter part of Wednesday, but we'll, we'll, we'll definitely feel effects from the wind uh, prior to that. So, so just be prepared for that um, and know, you know, you still have time now, but as we get closer to midweek, uh, time is, is going to be run out. And there will become a point where it's just going to be too hazardous to be on the roads. And we do see in these storms traffic fatalities as a result of those hazardous conditions. So don't put yourself in a situation where you're waiting um, until the last minute, you start seeing 40, 50, 60 mile an hour winds whipping, uh, rain and nasty conditions, and think that's the time you want to get on the interstate. That, that will not be a good time for that, okay? There from Matt Dixon that you declined to call from the vice president. Is that true? And why? No, I didn't know she called me. I saw that, but I, I, I was not aware of that. Have you spoken to the president at all? I mean, at this point, it seems like so they the, the uh, president has approved what we asked for. Uh, we're thankful for that. If there's something we need that they don't approve, I will not hesitate to call him. Uh, we want to use whatever resources are available to be able to help Floridians prepare and respond to this storm. But everything we've asked for uh, from President Biden, uh, he has approved. And we do think we'll get more approvals for some of the individual assistance and the debris removal after landfall. Kevin's in the process of preparing the made request for a major disaster declaration. I fully anticipate that that will be approved. And if there are things that we need that we're not getting uh, as governor, I'm going to I'll get on the horn and do. But we have not had a need uh, for for anything uh, that we've asked for. We have gotten support for and we're going to continue to move forward uh, to use any resources we can to be able to help Floridians weather the storm. We'll talk about what the state's doing to kind of manage uh, the storm and Helene because quickly switched focus here and people that are affected by Helene might be feeling forgotten. Well, they're not forgotten. And unfortunately, some of the Helene victims are in the path of this storm. You know, we hope that it doesn't end up uh, affecting some of the folks further north. I mean, we don't want to have anybody be affected, but, but some of the folks that have been through three storms, they, they're right now outside the cone. This can change, and so it's not, not set in stone, but there's ongoing uh, relief being done there. Now, our search and rescue operations for this is, is even more robust than it was for Helene. I think with so many people evacuating, you know, you know, you could have it even be more more significant. But if the people evacuated, you know, just like with Taylor County, you know, maybe you won't need as many. But all those assets are ready to go, uh, and then some. And that's urban search and rescue teams. That's Florida National Guard. That's our Florida State Guard. That's the Highway Patrol, Florida Fish and Wildlife, all the local sheriff's departments and police departments and fire departments. They're all mobilized. So so that effort will be there. And I hope that uh, nobody is victimized, but, but certainly the, we have a lot of people in the Sun Coast who just had damage and who just some people lost their homes. We had fatalities and you may be in a situation where you're getting even ma more major impacts in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, so we're mindful of that. Uh, but the reality is this search and rescue mission was conducted very robustly for Helene. It was completed. So all of those assets are available. The sheltering mission 
that, that we had to do. There were people that went to shelters. There are people that have been displaced. Uh, Kevin has worked with those folks. There's a variety of options that we've done. You know, this storm could potentially displace a lot more. I mean, that's just possible given the ferocity of this right now. And again, we hope that it weakens. It's forecast to weaken, but we have to assume this is going to be a monster. Uh, there's going to absolutely be a need for that. So I think what will end up happening on some of this stuff, you're going to have the search and rescue. You're going to have the things that we just do as a matter of course. Uh, and then when the dust settles, there's going to be people you know, likely that are going to be displaced. And all this housing mission will likely just be, be one general mission for the state. Uh, if you need a trailer, we're going to do, we're not going to discriminate between Helene or that. I mean, wherever the needs are, we're going to go and meet it. But, but obviously it's more challenging when you have uh, a category four storm hit. And then this will not only, this will be not even two weeks, uh, one day shy of two weeks where you have this one hitting, uh, you know, that's a really, really significant thing. And it's happened before in Florida, 2004 season was, was very crazy. Uh, and there are some similarities to that. Um, but the reality is, is just it, we're just using whatever we need to do. We're going to put the resources on, but there are more, I mean, I think Kevin, but there are going to be more stage for this than were for Helene and Helene was a really robust response. And, you know, you didn't, you didn't hear as much about Florida after a day or two because a lot of the focus was on some of these other states. So that was re robust. We knew it could be major, and, and it did have major impacts. Um, this one, uh, I think we're doing, I mean, we're going to have urban search and rescue all through from the Florida teams. They're all going to be ready to go. I think they're coming in from other states, uh, California even, you name it. So they're there. We have more guard mobilized for this one than we did for Hurricane Helene, uh, and there will be more, ultimately there will be more linemen that are pre-staged uh, for this one than is Helene. And look, how these things go depends on the path of the storm. I mean, you know, you look at the Florida Peninsula, there's a track that takes it through Tampa Bay, up I-4 and out the Atlantic Ocean. I mean, there are millions and millions of people that be in the path of that storm. There's other paths which would have big impacts, but perhaps not as many population and not as many power lines to, to, be, to be knocked down, perhaps. We'll see, uh, but there's a lot of resources that are being brought to bear. I don't know if you remember during Ian, there was a hospital in Port Charlotte that sustained a lot of damage uh, and it had patients and it had to do, I think they had to do search and rescue like the minute that they could to get some the critical patients out. Um, I don't know if there's been any changes to this hospital in Port Charlotte in particular, which is right in the crosshairs of the storm, and other hospitals in terms of needing that local evacuation to get well, patients. Well, I mean, Kevin, you want to address that specifically, but I, I know there's a major effort on the healthcare facilities um, that, that has been ongoing, and uh, it will not be limited to that. Thank you, Governor Eric. Um, we, we have numerous hospital facilities evacuating right now. Um, I don't want to say this is the largest. I'll say it's the largest since I've been here in 2018 for Hurricane Michael and beyond um, when I was the state emergency response team chief and, and moved into the directorship. Um, but this is right now ongoing. Uh, hospitals, ALFs, and nursing homes have certainly heeded the warnings that have been put out. And we are in the middle of uh, about there's five to 600 ambulances that are in, in active uh, evacuation right now of medical facilities in the greater Tampa Bay region. Um, we have requested even more rescue and ambulance units from FEMA. They have them staged up in the uh, Southeast United States, probably in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Um, we are using buses for those that are, um, and I always get this backwards, but ambulatory versus non-ambulatory, but if they can sit in the bus seat, we're getting uh, travel buses and things like that. So um, we've got everything. It, it is literally all available resources to transport individuals in and out of the uh, facilities, and we're taking them to their, um, the, the, each and every ALF and nursing home is required to have, and, and hospitals are required to have a, what we call a comprehensive emergency management plan that says they're going to move their patients from here to here. So what we're doing is we're helping supplement that plan by actually helping provide the transportation to get them there. But hundreds, nearly 600 ambulances and uh, other vehicles are involved in that right now. Uh, you, know, you have talked about the, uh, you know, this being a ferocious storm and, and potential major damage. Uh, given there are a lot of people who view this, the track that it's on as a quote, sort of a worst case scenario for the Tampa Bay area. Uh, citizens has a, a great deal of exposure in that area, like over four, 50 billion. Uh, I know it may be too early. Have you had any conversations or assurances from those in the insurance industry that they can withstand uh, a second major storm 
in such a short impact in terms of, I mean, is it too early to say what this I think might it's be? too early. Now, Helene, I think the, the reports were that that's going to be something that, that people are going to be weather. Now, of course, the, the wind damage in Helene was a very small portion of the flood damage. The flood damage is a national flood insurance program, so that doesn't implicate as much citizens or our private carriers. Uh, but I, I will say this, we, certainly since I've been governor, you game plan different types of scenarios that are going to impact the state and a major hurricane into Tampa Bay, given how uh, vulnerable it is to storm surge, how low lying it is, it is one of uh, the most significant events that, that we can respond to. Now, it's too early to say whether this is definitely going to go in and hit Tampa Bay. Clearly, there are models that suggest uh, that it will. Obviously, we are proceeding and assuming uh, that that's something that, that may happen. Uh, but I think it's too soon to say uh, there's a lot of uncertainty with this storm. If you look at, this is a very um, quickly forming storm. Uh, it formed, and then they said, well, it's going to potentially be a hurt, and it became a hurricane very quickly, tropical storm very quickly, hurricane very quickly. It was predicted to strengthen, but not to the level of 175 mile an hour sustained winds. I mean, that is a, and it's a rapid, rapid strengthening. But then if you look at the cone, go back 36 hours ago, the storm has actually gone underneath where the cone was. It's, it's basically bordering the Yucatan Peninsula. The initial cone had it being to where it would have been off that, that coast by a decent amount. Uh, so, so I think that there's just a lot of uncertainty. But from a protection of life perspective, the evacuation orders that have gone out in those vulnerable areas by the local uh, governments and emergency management have been the, the right decisions to do seems every indication that that our residents are really heeding the advice of that and recognizing that this could potentially be a, a major major impact uh, and then the response and the assets that have been that have been marshaled uh, are mar being marshaled commensurate to to the threat that it poses uh, to the state but particularly to that region that you turned down calls from both Biden and Harris. I are you that. saying you're not aware of that? And if so, how are you not aware of that? Uh, so Biden called me a couple days ago with Helene when I was on the helicopter. Uh, I didn't have any issues. They had helped us with what we've done. I'm not aware that he's tried to call uh, since then. Certainly hasn't called my phone. So I don't know quite where they're getting uh, that information. At the same time, we got the approvals that we need. If there's something else that we need, you know, I'll hop on the phone very quickly, uh, whether that's a FEMA administrator or the president, uh, and we will press the case to be able to get approvals for what we need in Florida. But we have gotten approvals for everything that we've asked for. Are you I didn't know that she had called, so I, I'm not sure who they called. They didn't call me, um, and their characterization of it um, was something that they did. It wasn't anything that uh, anybody in my, my office did in terms of saying that it was political. Given, given, the, given the severity of the storm, I did, since I, I did want to ask you about, about politics right now in terms of should, should you know, it. I don't really want to answer questions about This is not a time for politics. No, excuse me, Gary. You and your publication will twist anything that's done to try to make a political agenda. That's what you do. That's how you get your clicks. I understand that. I understand that's the business model. Well, but, but I don't want to talk about politics because, well, but I have a feeling that however you do, you guys will find a way to frame it. That's just your shtick. I get it. It's fine. Uh, but I don't want to participate in it. Uh, we have had to respond to a Category 4 hurricane. We've had to prepare and now respond to something that may hit uh, as a major hurricane, may be Category 4, may even be bigger than that. We hope that it, that it does, uh, but that should be the focus. And I think some of these questions are trying to create uh, some type of political angle where there's just none there. What we've asked for has been approved. You're not seeing me out there carping or complaining about anything. Uh, we have gotten what we need from the feds. Uh, we have been working constructively with all the local communities. We have marshaled an incredible amount of resources in the state of Florida to be able to get the job done. And that's just what we're going to continue to do. That's what we've always done uh, when it comes to these types of situations. Regarding the buildings that are in this area, these homes are rated for 140 or 150 mile an hour winds. Obviously, this is far exceeding that. Do you have any concern that these homes are not going to be able to withstand this type of storm? Anyone that would say they don't have concerns about a 170 mile per hour, 775 mile per hour hurricane 
doesn't know much about major hurricanes. Uh, the fact is the most powerful that's ever hit Florida was in the 1930s. The Labor Day hurricane was 185 miles per hour. I don't even think Andrew quite reached 175 when it made landfall. I think it was about 173. I uh, know that was a much smaller storm than potentially this will be. We'll see. Um, there's a lot of runway left for this. All the models say it's going to weaken. Uh, but what I would just tell the Floridians is, you know, that type of power is, is really, really significant. And so if people are telling you to evacuate, uh, then you should evacuate. Um, if you have, certainly if you have a home that, that is older, certainly if you're in a mobile home, I would imagine those are going to be evacuated anyways. Uh, but there's going to be certain structures that will not be able to, to withstand if it comes in at, at that, at that uh, level. Now, that's not what the forecast is calling for, but the forecast never called for it to get this strong to begin with. Uh, so I would just tell people, uh, you know, you know kind of your homes and, and how they're rated. Um, most of them would be able to uh, ha handle any new construction, would be able to handle most likely a Category uh, 4 storm and that, that 140, 150. You know, as you start getting above that, it just becomes really, really powerful. And there's just no telling how that will end up. Hurricane Michael was not quite that powerful. I think it was 160 miles. The newer construction tended to do okay. Older construction, some of that just got wiped off, wiped off the map, just totally gone. Uh, so, so this is a really, really powerful storm right now. We're going to continue to monitor it. We'll see how it does overnight. We'll see how it progresses tomorrow. Uh, I think the forecast, I still think there's a lot of uncertainty with this. But what is certain is we are going to get major impacts. Like that will happen one way or another. The precise way it enters the state what type of surge, all this other stuff, uh, th that remains to be seen. But, but it is going to be a, a really significant event. Looking at the building code map, it looks pretty outdated, frankly. Is that something that, you know, you would consider or you think? What, what do you mean by outdated? Well, look at, I mean, you've had multiple Category 3 storms hit the, paint, the, the Big Bend. Homes are rated for 120, 115. Looking at the Panhandle, 140 miles an hour, this area. I mean, it, it just looks kind of outdated. Well, I think if you look at and, and there, the Big Ben, I know I've spoken with some folks about, about some of that, about some of the construction. Uh, but if you look at the Big Ben damage, um, you know, that was not because of the wind. That was because of the st surge. I mean, that was, you know, when you have 15 to 20 feet of storm surge, uh, that is going to cause major, major damage. And so... Um, I don't know that there's a building code. I mean, I know like they raised some of the ones that were raised really high. I think the newer homes have to be raised higher there. And they had kind of the, what, the concrete the piling. Um, you know, they, 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 the surge hit it and the homes. The wooden that were a little lower totally wiped it out because of the surge. Do you want to address anything on that? <clears throat> Thank you, sir. You know, I, I think one of the things to the heart of your question is the Florida Building Code is the toughest building code, to my knowledge, in the United States. And it has performed admirably ever since it started going into effect under uh, the Bush administration and moving forward. 2004, and even just recently, this year, there were updates to the Florida Building Code underneath the DeSantis administration. So the Florida Building Code continues to lead the way. Uh, we and, and I'm sure that the governor and the legislature will continue to lead uh, the way in that, in, in that building code. But again, to the governor's point, where we see people that are built of the Florida Building Code, typically after 2004 or later, and they have that resilience, you know, again, in Horseshoe Beach, in uh, Deacle Beach, in uh, Steenhadgee, where we saw the circular pillars, reinforced concrete, 20 feet in the air, that stuff. The, and, and again, the sheriff was telling us, Sheriff Padgett said the new code is 20 feet in the air. All of that stuff was fine. And it was there, it stayed there. Now, did they lose their steps leading up to? Uh, sure, they lost that. But they just had to rebuild those. So, again, people that end up having their homes destroyed will ultimately have to build back to the Florida Building Code in the general impact area that that comes into. But, again, I think it's very, very important to uh, point out that Florida leads the way in our resilient building code. Even the governor of this last administration, or I'm sorry, this last legislative session, made changes that increasing that. So, again, I think... Florida leads way, and we're going to continue to do that. Okay, so we have um, a very strong storm that's uh, near the Yucatan Peninsula. We got 
a little under 700 miles uh, away for its approach into the state of Florida. There's still a lot of uncertainty in terms of what precise track it will take, uh, but there's not much uncertainty that there is going to bring significant impacts, major impacts uh, for many, many communities throughout the state of Florida. So many Floridians have already heeded the call who are in those evacuation zones to do so. Others are in the process of executing your plan, and, and I would just urge you to do that now. Uh, when you start talking about this major storm surge, that is just not something that is uh, navigable the way potentially some of the wind can be. But even though how the wind is now, you don't want to mess with, with that either when it's at that, uh, that level. So, so please take the appropriate precautions. Uh, all the local communities that have done the evacuation orders, they're mobilizing their shelters. Uh, we've got the hotels. We've got the, the flow on the interstate. And we're going to continue to do all we can. Uh, to make sure that folks uh, end up safe uh, through this, but we, um, you know, we're going to have a major, major impact here in the middle part uh, of the week for for the state of Florida. Uh, where precisely it hits remains to be seen, but wherever it hits, um, and in many places beyond the eye of the storm and even the cone, is going to produce major impacts. Uh, so please execute your plan now.